Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Amen. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good Christian friends, there's nothing much lower than dirt. People put paths and roads, freeways and highways over dirt. The thorns and thistles grow up over and above the dirt. If you look around, you'll see rocks and boulders lying on top of the dirt. You'll see mountains also, sheer stone rising high above the dirt. Of course, all dirt is not the same. Some is sandy, some is full of rocks and pebbles and stones, some has too much clay in it. Good soil, good dirt, isn't found everywhere. You need the right conditions for good soil, good dirt. Agriculture is generally the work of cultivating good dirt, good soil, so that the seed sown by the sower will yield a fruitful harvest. Trees and bushes, they need to be removed. Stumps might need to be dynamited out of the ground. Stones need to be picked from the field, sometimes by hand. And the dirt needs to be tilled and fertilized and irrigated. When Jesus tells the parable of the sower sowing his seed, Jesus tells it to people who have an idea of how much effort goes into producing good soil, good dirt. Also, he told it originally to people living in a rather arid environment where many areas of the country were not suitable for growing any kind of crop at all. You may have heard other sermons on this parable that focus on the fact that the disciples, unlike God, can't see what the heart of men and women and children actually looks like. That is, they can't see if their hearts are like a hard path or rocky ground or a shallow bit of dirt or a thistle patch or good soil, good dirt. And because they can't see which is which, the disciples and later through history, preachers and pastors simply needed to sow the seed of the good news, preach Christ and Jesus crucified to everyone without favoritism because they cannot know where it will sprout and grow, where that faith in Christ will be brought up by the seed of God's word being sown everywhere. They can't know. It is the work of the Holy Spirit to make it grow. It is the work of the preacher to faithfully sow the seed with reading, preaching, and teaching God's word. Anyone involved in farming will tell you that the one who cultivates the field needs to be active in keeping it in good shape for harvesting a crop. If the field is left to its own devices, it will be full of trees and brush, full of weeds and thistles and dense scrub. It may be useful for other things, but it won't be useful for sowing seed. There are even geological forces like erosion that impact farming that have to be dealt with at different times. When we think of our heart as being like that field, we need to remember that we don't handpick the stones out of our own heart. We don't remove the paths laid down by the world with our bare hands. We don't cut down and till up the thistles ourselves. In Ezekiel chapter 11, God promises that He will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh that you may walk in His statutes and keep His rules and obey Him. And such people shall be my people, God says, and I will be their God. What good news! God makes the hearts of people ready for His Son for the good news of his son. But God also warns us. And for those whose heart goes after their detestable things and their abominations, I will bring their deeds upon their own head, declares the Lord God. Don't resist the work of God as he works on the field of your heart. 
in Deuteronomy, we also find this promise. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. In our Old Testament reading from Isaiah 55, we hear the promise of God that the word that goes out, that is the seed that is sown, shall not return to God empty, but it shall accomplish that for which I purpose, says God, and shall succeed in the things for which he sent it. The Holy Spirit is active in making this happen, and so is Christ Jesus. To see how Jesus, how Christ, is active in this, let's look at another parable told by Jesus. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, Look, for three years now I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and put on manure. Then if it should bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Who is the vine dresser? It is Jesus. God is very interested in your heart. When he comes to it, your heart is in desperate need of cultivation of preparation, like a wild patch of land seemingly unsuitable for our agriculture, he comes to it. Jesus describes the heart saying, for out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are stones and thistles, gnarly old tree stumps, deeply rooted. They are the hard paths of the world and they need to be removed, dynamited by the law of God and hand-picked out of your heart by the gracious and merciful nail-pierced hands of your Savior Jesus Christ. And even as your faith grows to maturity along the way, it is the Holy Spirit and Jesus himself who work to cultivate and create the conditions necessary to bring forth the fruit of, of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit that the Father desires to see in you. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I started out saying that there was nothing much lower than dirt. And that's true. But the good news is that God loves to lift up the brokenhearted, the downtrodden, the stepped upon. He brings down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. And Jesus teaches in Matthew 23, whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. As we hear in James chapter 4, the Lord gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And then James teaches, humble yourselves, therefore, before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Which is to say, don't be so proud. Recognize that it is God who does the exalting. If you exalt yourself, if you lift yourself up by your own bootstraps, if you go about pridefully picking the stones and thistles from your own heart, you will be doomed to fail. Your success will not be eternal. It will not be everlasting. Such a harvest grown from such a field will not last it will spoil in the tests and trials of the world. Don't fight to wrestle the shovel or hoe out of Jesus' hands. Don't fight him for the keys to the spreader and the combine. The field of your heart is not a self-help hobby farm. It is humble dirt that needs to be cultivated and implanted with faith. The other bit of good news 
is that in Christ Jesus, we know that God doesn't mind getting his hands down in the dirt, in the mud, in the soil of our hearts. He is willing to touch death, to get dirty, to spread manure, to pick the rocks out by hand and to be pricked by the thorns of your sin in order to create in you a clean heart, a fertile field for the seed of his holy word. Our challenge right now has been our isolation during the threat of COVID-19. Does it feel like you're becoming overrun? Does it feel like the weeds, the thistles of the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches or the lack thereof and the desire for them are wrapping around your neck to choke out God's word? Do you feel as if the evil one as a murder of pecking birds has come to snatch away the faith from your heart like birds eating seeds off of a hard path or road? Or that you're in danger of falling away due to the tribulations of our times? If this is you, rest in Christ and know that his nail-pierced hand is at the plow. His nail-pierced hand is shooing away the devil and holding you up, lifting you up in your distress. Trust in him. As he said to you last week, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest for your soul. Earlier before the sermon, we sang the hymn, Preach You the Word. It fits well with our gospel reading today. It fits well with our Old Testament reading today. It fits the parable well. It is focused on the sowing of the seed, the Word of God. And we've been talking also about the condition of the soil and who tends the field. So I'll leave you with the first verse of another hymn that puts its focus on what we've been talking about today. It's also a prayer, and it goes like this. On what has now been sown, thy blessing, Lord, bestow. The power is thine alone to make it sprout and grow. Do thou in grace the harvest raise, and thou alone shalt have the praise. To God be the glory as he works in your field as he picks the stones of your sin, as he forgives you, as he implants faith, as he makes that faith grow, as he brings forth the fruits of faith that he desires. In him and in his Son. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Take our minds and think through them. Take our lips and speak through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire. For the sake of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.